Egypt was an amazing no, no, civilization. No, 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 it was it, not created no. by black Africans. I'm who, sorry. Who, it wasn't. Who, who created it? People who are white. So if man originated in Africa, mm -hmm. which means that they were Africans, then all of a sudden when you talk about uh, the uh, amazing works of the Egyptians, they were people of color. I know that's a little rough for you to handle, but I know you want to hold on to that somehow thinking whites built the pyramids, but I'm trying to understand. Yeah, we did. No, you didn't. No, you didn't, because first of all, they were building things in Egypt while white Europeans were still in caves. Uh, that's a that's, fact. That is a, the, that's a fact. Absolutely first, true first, of all, you know first of all, the greatest genius when it came to the building of the pyramids, which you would, do you know what Those they are? Those are white people, by the way. Who are white people? The uh, Egyptians are not African. I'm sorry. Do you know where Egypt is? Yes, it's in where? North Africa. Many of the early archaeologists came to the study of ancient Egypt and ancient Nubia from the perspective of Semitic languages or the study of the Hebrew Bible. And it was very important to them to bring Egypt specifically into the sphere of, of biblical studies. And so they had to carve Egypt away from Africa to bring it into that sphere. And the way that they did that was they used race. So these early archeologists effectively made ancient Egypt white in the sense that they made it part of a dominant Western culture and ancient Nubia was separated from that, it was black. And this was how they took Egypt out of Africa and put it into this, this Semitic sphere, this biblical sphere. And that is also one of the reasons why we are taught that Egypt is not in Africa. Egypt is in so, supposedly in the Middle East. There's no such thing as the Middle East. What folk are dealing with is removing Africans from Africa, removing African history from the history, from the story of African people, and assign it to other people, whether that history is, is political history, scientific history, or religious history. Our story has been stolen and has been used by others to empower themselves. And that's one of the reasons why we are the most uh, physically, emotionally, economically, and spiritually disenfranchised people on this planet because we don't know our story. We listen to everyone else's interpretation of us. And all of those interpretations present us at our lowest. So until we can step back and be courageous enough to identify that, that African that is in us, and begin to see the world through their eyes, we will always be inferior to others. Those old ideas about black inferiority were completely wrong, without a foundation. As it happens, modern science has given us a vast fund of new and reliable knowledge which shows that the black peoples do indeed have a history of their own, as rich and strange, as long and sometimes surprising, as any major branch of the human family. 5,000 years ago, this homeland had already become the scene of a civilization in many ways unmatched anywhere else in the ancient world. This is where we have to begin, in the Egypt of the pharaohs, in the African land that was the gift of the god of the Nile. Now, you are right here at the pyramid. The outer casing of these pyramids are five tons each and the inner casing are 50 tons each. This pyramid of Khufu is built in the fourth dynastic period. There were no people at this particular time called Jews who built the pyramids and definitely not uh, Machenbegin. Machenbegin is an Ashkenazi Jew from Poland. And he stood here right where you are now and said his people built the pyramids. But he's able to tell the world that because of the power that they have inflicted upon other people to force that story on other people. So we come back here to tell the truth. But the discovery of the tombs of the pyramid builders reconstruct history and it tells us that the builders of the pyramids were Egyptians and the builders of the pyramids were not slaves. The Western concept that these were built by slaves that were badly treated has to be abandoned. And no, it was not built 
by Jews when they were enslaved uh, in Egypt. Jews were never enslaved in Egypt. Jewish scholars are beginning to acknowledge that historical reality. So if the Jews were enslaved in Egypt and the pyramid was built 2400 B.C. before Abraham was born, then how can the Jews create something before they came into existence? When you study our story, our history, you realize that other people's story just does not hold up. And that in and of itself is a mind-freeing experience. So we come back here for an eyewitness account and let's go up closer so we can feel the stones and touch it because you're actually feeling the stones, the master builders of your ancestors who built this. And I'm saying somebody knows something about us that we don't know about ourselves and definitely don't want us to know. Now the Egyptians call their land Kemet and they use a piece of charcoal, a burnt piece of wood as charcoal to symbolize what they mean, the blackest black. And all of their carvings of themselves, they paint their skins dark brown or black. They have white paint, red paint, yellow paint, but they paint themselves black. How anyone in the world with so much information available for the public to see can even be under any illusions that the Egyptian is even light-skinned. Just when you look at climate and weather, if you go to Egypt, you will notice that the weather is quite hot. And you will notice that it is almost impossible to be able to be outside dressed the way the carvings on the walls are as it relates to the people. Because you would get melanoma before we even knew melanoma existed. So they could not have been uh, depigmented or less pigmented. They have to have been heavily pigmented. So what we have then is various eyewitness descriptions where people visited Egypt and they left an account of the Egyptians in their texts. So what you have is people like Herodotus, who describes them as black-skinned and woolly-haired. Galen, who describes them as having short, black, dry and brittle hair. Not to mention, as Dr. Clark has taught us, where in the world did they do what they did in Africa. He used to say, are you telling me that Eurasians came out of Europe and built Africa up, but never went back to Europe to develop their civilizations the, the way they did in Africa? Or does it make sense that it was built up in Africa and it was sporadically brought across the globe to China and to Iraq and to uh, Iran and into Europe uh, where you have the Stonehenge? Would that make better sense? So the answer is, there is no question at this point. Egyptians are black. The real Egyptians are black. Because the real, real Egyptians, they are real Africans. So those people in Lower Egypt, you see in Cairo, Alexandria, and the Falahins area, they were mixed between the Turks, Mamluks, French, English, Romans. So those people who come to uh, attack Egypt in that time, they couldn't come to Upper Egypt, to the south, which we still have the same color, our dark color or black color. Now, uh, just for our, the education of our viewership, why don't you share with us uh, a breakdown of Egypt as it is today in so far as blacks or uh, combinations thereof of European descent and what have you? We don't have, we don't have Egyptians of European descent in Egypt. We have a population which is basically the inter, uh, which is basically a mixture of ancient Egyptian blacks who intermarried with Arabs right after the Arab conquest. The ancient Egyptian population was brown and black. For instance, you have a discipline in academia called Egyptology. Now, what is Egyptology? They say, well, it's the study of Egypt. Well, no, it's not the study of Egypt. Egyptology was created by the Vatican in order to make sure that there was a screening mechanism in place to explain away the truth that was being excavated every year that kept giving them proof of who the ancient Kemites were. So Egyptology and Egyptologists are essentially agents of disinformation. Where else do you see 
a society, a people, and a way of life actually become a science. Unless you have specific purposes to make sure that the information that you are gathering on those people are given the proper perspectives to maintain the lie. So you don't get an Americology, you don't get Europology, you don't get Russiaology. Richard Pryor, right? When he had his special back in 1977, there's a scene. They only allowed him to do five shows. In fact, they were rather ignorant because it took him five shows to realize what the brother was really doing. Richard Pryor, there's a scene where he goes in uh, to the pyramids and he is carrying the bags of the archaeologists and the anthropologists who are of European descent. And they're talking amongst themselves about what this find is and its importance, the greatness of it. And Richard Pryor is in the, this temple uh, looking all around and he begins to say, but all these people are black. He said, look at that guy over there, that guy look like my uncle. And he's just, you know, I mean, it's humorous, but what Richard Pryor is actually talking about is that, you know, these are black people in these pyramids, and these are the people that built these pyramids. He said, wait a minute, these people... And then all of a sudden, the, the camera begins to show the anthropologists of European descent, and they start to nudge each other because they realize, hey, you know, the guy carrying the bags is looking around, and he's learning some things in here. So very quietly, you see them backing out of the pyramid. Right? And Richard Pryor is still there talking about how great the pyramid is. And then all of a sudden, you, they show you the door close and all of a sudden the scene goes black. Which means that was the blackout on the information for black folk to understand their history. This is what Richard Pryor was dropping on us in 1977. This is what actually has happened. Richard was telling us, this is what has happened to us. Because as, as you become conscious and brother becomes conscious and as a community we become conscious, the Europeans who know this, are beginning to realize. So they're trying to shut the door on us. After visiting Egypt, white scholar Count Constantine Devalny wrote, just think, the race of black men today, our slave and object of our scorn, is the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. <laughs>